One big hesitation that a lot of people have when they consider leaving land to move on board a sailboat and travel the world sounds like this. I fear that I will lose contact with my family and friends, and I am not ready to do that yet. And you know, that's a valid concern. But with that in mind, today I want to tell you a story about my own family and how that ties into the life that we live. Well, let me explain. In 1997, I was 11 years old and I became the godmother of the absolute cutest baby ever. The baby in question is my cousin, Romain, and I had grand ambitions for how I would show him the best of the world. And when I was 11 years old, the best of the world for me was riding Space Mountain at Disneyland. Now here is what happened. I was a pretty shitty godmother. I moved abroad when I was fairly young and I never really hung out with my family. Life happened. And I was so ashamed that I never really dared contacting people in my family when I was back in Paris until COVID-19 gave me a little bit of perspective. As I am sure you did, I spent two years completely disconnected from anyone in my family. So back a few months ago, right in between vaccines and Omicron. I went to Paris and my aunt, thanks God, contacted me and asked if we could hang out all together. And when I saw my cousin slash godson again, I had the shock of my life. The cute baby is now a full blown adult and uh, I missed everything in between. Yeah, as far as godmother go, I was pretty shitty one. But what I learned was that he apparently was interested in sailing. So I asked him, hey, if you want, just come visit us and go sailing together. Now there are two types of people in this world. There are the people that will say yes, and they think about it, and that's where it stays at. And then there are the people who the next day book their plane tickets. We made it! So there is currently a person that I do not know on board and it's entirely my fault. Also, this is my one shot to redeem myself as a godmother. So this will be interesting. My plan starts on one of Madeira's most famous hikes, called a levada. Levadas are man-made miniature canals that bring water to different parts of the island. All of them are accessible by foot and lead to some beautiful hiking trails through the mountain, some spectacular waterfalls and overall incredible scenery. Okay, so today I am on a hike with my cousin. Ryan stayed at the boat. We are on a very popular Levada, and this one leads to 25 waterfalls, apparently. And we have been descending for about a solid kilometer, and I am slightly concerned about the way up. Roma leading the way. Oh merde, oh merde. Allez. Oh. Je vais y arriver, hein. C'est bien Madère. Ça va, t'es content d'être venu Carrément. Meilleures vacances, hein Possible. Meilleures vacances. Possible pour nous. My plan for redemption is coming along nicely, but I still feel a sense of duty towards my 11 years old self. And while there are no Disneyland or Space Mountain in Madeira, the island offers a couple of activities far, far superior. And because the more the merrier, our good friend Jules and Tani join us for what will be some adventurous exploration of the island. So today, we head towards Funchal, the capital of Madeira, where we take the cable car to climb up the hill. And while the tropical garden and views we find there make it worth the climb, that is not why I took everybody there. The uh, experience 
uh, of Madeira would not be complete without a very steep hill. Uh, ideally a, su a succession of very steep hills. <sighs> All right, guys, are we uh, are we ready for the ride of the day? We can go two and three. Yes, I am sure. I did my research. This is going to be a lot of fun. Are you are you into this? Completely. Mildly excited. Is this alright? No, this one. Today to bring a bigger oh. one. Alright. Okay. Uh, is this is this us? Oh. Oh my god, that was intense. So th Ooh. these are like on a shoe. Just on a shoe. Yeah? It's yeah. brick. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That is amazing. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not walking back up. <laughs> no, I uh, no. No. <laughs> no, I, I think we can agree on that. Yeah. Wow. How is that Ryan? That was uh I was honestly a little scared in that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say there were moments where I was also, I saw the, the side of the road coming a little too close. Yeah, nice. I, there's a couple of times when I closed my eyes. <laughs> there was a couple of times I was like, <laughs> yeah. Physics aren't making sense right now. If you compare that to Space Mountain de Disneyland. Do you also need to seek redemption from a family member or a friend who you were not a great person to? Or you just want to travel to Madeira because it is an incredibly beautiful place? Well, you should check out the sponsor of this week's video. Portugal Getaways. Portugal Getaways has curated the best hotels, itineraries and experiences to offer packaged or tailored trips around Portugal, the Azores and Madeira. Whether you travel solo, as a couple or as a family, whether you are the adventurous type or like me, you enjoy some food and wine, Portugal Getaways has the perfect trip for you. If I were to choose, I would go for this Lisbon and Madeira wine experience. Uh, oh wait, no, no, no. Uh, actually, this Azores and Madeira premium five-star spa. And pro tip, our friend Jules and Tani stayed at that hotel and it was amazing. Honestly, there are dozens of trips that I would take and they even have great deals. So go to the link at the description of this video and check them out. And once again, thank you so much Portugal Getaways for sponsoring this video and allow us to make more. So after 
all these emotions, we are going to recover the way that we do best with some wine. And there is no going to Madeira without tasting some Madeira wine. So we're here at Belendiz, which is where we can get a tour and learn about how Madeira wine is produced and uh, incidentally taste some Madeira wine. So let's go. <laughs> I have to admit, I am quite excited about this one. All right, Jules, on a scale from uh, 0 to 10, how's the level of excitement for the Madeira wine? It would be better if I wasn't the designated driver, unfortunately. Oh, you lost that one. I lost, you I lost, lost that, that one. one, so I'm going to make up for it this evening once we're back at the hotel. And you can just tell me how great it was. I can buy you a bottle. How about that? Uh -huh. Only one? <laughs> What makes Madeira wine so particular are two factors. First, it is made out of grapes produced on the island only. And because Madeira is made of volcanic rock, its grapes give the Madeira wine a mineral and acidic taste. But because the winemaking process involves heating it up while it's aging, the Madeira wine can be kept open for many years without turning into vinegar, making it a great investment, which obviously justified investing in a few bottles. What, what do we think on this side of the table? Sure. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Warm up. It's a bit sweet. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a bit sweet. It's a couple of glasses of wine. I like sweet. Get a hotel room mm. here. This is like Iowa wine. No. <laughs> no. No. Absolutely <laughs> not. You peasant. No. Hell no. Absolutely not. No. Ma no. Iowa wine is seriously. <laughs> this is good. I like it. There is no going back after a glass of Madeira wine. And after our visit, surprise, there was a wine festival waiting for us. Was the next day a little bit difficult? Yes. Did I have the perfect plan to make up for it on the island? Also yes. So today, we're heading to the northwest tip of Madeira, behind a huge cliff, to spend the day at the natural swimming pools of Porto Moniz. Did Ryan just invite us to an incredibly exclusive activity? Yes. We get tickets too. Oh wow, Ryan, what a generous man. How much was it? 150 a person. Okay, so today we decided to come to the natural swimming pools of Porto Moniz, which are located in the northwest part of Madeira. Uh, and well, the experience is uh, refreshing. Half of the fun is uh, standing on the edge of the swimming pool and waiting for the, for the waves to hit. Very fresh. Right. Like a seal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a little bowl for the show later. So this is the good side. This is the adventurous side. How's it going, Ryan? You enjoying yourself, honey? Really refreshing. At this stage, accumulating plus points had become easy. And when it came to redemption, I was clearly in the green. So I decided to take a gamble and book ourselves on one activity that we'd heard Madeira is some of the best place in the world to experience. With this one, I was either going to double my gains or potentially go back to zero. But both Ryan and I were intrigued, so we went for it anyways. And in terms of competing with Disneyland, this was going to be absolutely unbeatable. Good morning. Today we are doing something that is apparently absolutely best on the island. And it is, what is Ryan? We're gonna go canyoning. Show me your diaper ride. Okay, so we are going down to the first uh, canyoning place and uh, we sound like little cows. And that's it really. When I was steadily employed in the corporate world, 
I would spend the few days of paid time off I had trying to decide if I should travel to see my family or to explore the world. And as a result, I did not see them that much. But since living on our sailing adventures, Ryan and I have had so many more opportunities to connect with our family and friends, because now we can create those opportunities ourselves. And the time we spend together is real quality time, as opposed to, you know, rushing through your entire list of contacts in your hometown whenever you're there, and coming back from your vacation trained as a result. Obviously, it helps that we visit parts of the world that aren't completely devoid of interest, and our friends and family generally enjoy joining us where we sail. My butt is stuck! <laughs> So as far as redemption goes, Madeira is clearly helping my case. And when the time comes for us to leave the island, I take stock on the situation. How were those vacations in Madeira? I'm pretty fine, yeah. Pretty fine? Pretty fine. Would you come back? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Still things to do here. Okay, on a scale from 0 to 10, how much fun have you had this week? 9.5. 9.5. Not bad, huh? Okay, now the most important question. On a scale from 0 to 10, how would you rate having me as a godmother? <laughs> uh, Awkward silence. Yeah, 9.52. A 9.52. Amazing. Redemption accomplished. <laughs> well, you'll have to come more often, Romain. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Don't say no to it. I cannot. <laughs> How about you, Ryan? What about? How would you rate uh, sailing the world with me on a scale from 0 to 10? It's an 11. It's good. Oh, it's that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, clearly, I still have uh, half a point to, to, com to, co to complete. <laughs> <laughs> so there is room for improvement. Yeah. Always. <laughs>